And away we go, hour number two here on this May 2nd, 2012. On the T, on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio and Television Network. It's uh, one pro, one hack. You're still an IPGA pro. I'm still an IPGA and pro. And you're playing better golf you ever have for a long time. I, I am. Just don't, uh, not, That's don't Jay get, Horton. Don't get the chance to play in the Monday tournaments anymore. Yeah, well, you will get eventually. Of course, the former UAB Blazer, I don't like to bring this up, though. You know, Ames Little Cyclone. Uh, Title Town. Title Town. I Title Town. You, 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 you should get used to Title Town. I'm the head of the Hack Nation, Mike Rickard, and... Uh, the last uh, couple months, you've been listening to uh, Tim Dara, TD, and uh, Judd Gibb. And uh, if you didn't listen to the first hour, Judd Gibb is playing in the Iowa Cup matches. He is playing the Iowa Cup matches. I've been looking, trying to update myself with the second round results down there at the Cup matches, and I haven't uh, haven't gotten an update yet. But no, we're going to get an update because uh, right now the pros are leading. The ratings are going to plummet because he's on the air with us. We have Alex Maselli on. That's the way better. Than Ten that. times better than some <laughs> Iowa Cup matches. And you know what? He met his you lovely bride. Lovely at, bride. You met your lovely bride at Drake University. Bride. You, you, sh- you should have been at the uh, relays the, uh, last weekend. Well, I was a little busy last weekend, but uh, I'm <laughs> sure I would have enjoyed it if I had been there. Now, do you have any fond memories of you and your lovely bride at the relays? No. Pe- Peggy's, Pe- Peggy's. Well, I, you know, I I have fond memories of Peggy's all the time. Quite interesting. I I saw what was it like a year ago that that was up for sale. Yeah, in fact, uh, it was sold, and I would have liked to bought uh, three days out of the year out of that place. I I would just want at least three days: Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the relays because, you know, it's college tap beer, two bucks a pop. Relays, six dollars. You can't even get near the place. You know, uh, there was some good football game weeks there too. Um, but yeah, I remember Peggy's. But no, I don't. I don't remember any. You know, Relays is kind of crazy. Plus, it's near the end of the year. You just want to get out of school. You really weren't thinking about anything else. Remember, I have fourteen Drake interns that work for me, and uh, I know that feeling because their focus right now is not on creating our media world. It's about going home. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, I ran track for my fr- my freshman year at Drake, and all I could tell you is that it was just it was, it was I was I was glad when I didn't have to do it anymore. When I just kind of like you know kind of enjoyed college, so I can understand them wanting to get out of there. So you remember the name Jim Duncan? Yes. The voice of the Drake Relays. Yes. His son is a very good friend of mine. Very good writer. He's actually a uh, he's a food writer now in Iowa. But uh, Jim Duncan, oh, his father, w- you know, the voice of the Drake Relays. And now the track's named after him. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. What, what was your uh, – I, I never knew you had this track background. What was your uh, forte in track? I was a sprinter and a hurdler. No. No. Yeah. That's got to be Golf Channel material, Alex. Come on. No, I don't think – I hope not. <laughs> I got enough. Pro- I got enough problems. I don't need to give them any more fodder. <laughs> well, everybody's getting all uh, cranked up for the Wells Fargo Championship down there. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of the best field again since the Masters, uh, and everybody getting warmed up for the Players Championship. How do you see this week uh, breaking out with all the players? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we got five of the top ten players in the world here. You know, which includes Tiger, Phil, and uh, Roy McIlroy. That's a pretty good group. Um, you know, I think that you have to be careful because this is one of those places where you've seen, if you look at the list of winners, I'm not going to say that they're guys that would have jumped out at you at the time. and uh, But yet you can obviously have the, the better player succeed here as well. So I think it's a pretty open field in a lot of ways. There are a lot of guys that, you know, we're halfway through the season, believe it or not. And there's a lot of guys that are looking to try to do a little something with their season right now that didn't really probably have the best start in the world. I can think of one guy in particular, Brendan Dijon, who lives here, who knows quite how really well. Had a pretty decent week last week, starting to maybe turn it around. So you can look at a guy like that, and maybe he's going to have a week. I mean, when Anthony Kim won here, really wasn't thinking about AK. So I, I just think that there's there's a lot of uh, incentive, uh, as well as the fact that our guys are looking. They're not really looking yet at the U.S. Open, but they're getting really close. I think once you get past players, it, the focus is really going to be on U.S. Open. This course, you know, uh, I, I, I know the players like it. I mean, obviously it's a challenging golf course. Does it help? You know, does it does it set them up? Does it help prepare them for a U.S. Open to come play, or what? What type of player does this golf course favor when uh, you know out there on the field? 
Well, you know they're going to have a PJ Championship here. Um, and there's going to be some changes to the golf course. But generally, I mean, it's not like they're going to completely reroute the golf course. It's pretty much the same golf course with a couple of tweaks. So it's a, it's a major venue in itself. The setup is such that uh, it gives you a little more room off the tee at times. The greens aren't going to be as fast as maybe they would be for a PJ Championship. But, yeah, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a, what would be considered to be a traditional major venue. And because of that, I think it's, uh, that's why you're going to see really ball strikers do well here. Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't know about preparation this early for a, a, a U.S. Open. I think that there are guys in the past that, you know, if they were thinking about the first of May and getting ready for the, you know, the middle of June, that's probably a little early. I think you're looking more of a memorial time frame for that kind of stuff. But if you look at that, you think memorial, you'll think this golf course. I think there's a lot of similarities. You're listening on the T on the Iowa Sports Connection radio and television network. Uh, he's a good friend of the uh, program, Alex Maselli, and uh, you can see him on uh, the Golf Channel uh, on a daily basis. And uh, next week, the players, uh, your perspective on the players. Well, you know, that's such a, such a different golf course in so many ways. And I think anybody that tees it up at, at the players has a chance because length is really thrown out the window. Certainly you could take advantage of your length, but you have to also control your golf ball. And so the guys that hit it in the rough, I don't think have this advantage like they may have at other venues where you could hit it long and hit it in the rough. I think it's such, it, it is so much of a ball striker's golf course. And yet, as I said, you can also take advantage of your length. And uh, I think that golf course is maybe the quintessential golf course in regards to the fact that it lets anybody that tees it up uh, have a chance to win. You know, you, you mentioned you were you know, we're halfway through the PGA Tour season. Uh, Which you know, blows me away. If you kind of recap the season right now, I mean, who is there anybody out there that's really kind of surprised you, that's risen to the top you know, a lot quicker than anybody else, and maybe, uh, maybe somebody that maybe isn't living up to, the, uh, up to par right now? Well, I mean, let's take a look. You got Luke Donald, you got Rory McIlroy, you got Phil Mickelson, you got Tiger Woods, you got Hunter Mahan, you have Steve Stricker. All those guys have won at least one time on the PJ Tour this year, except for Mayans won twice. So that takes care of a pretty big chunk of the PJ Tour season. And I don't think any of those guys surprise you. Uh, you got Justin Rose thrown in there. I don't think that surprises you. So in, in general, I'm not really surprised by anybody per se. Uh, you know, you can sit there and say, well, Mark Wilson winning X. Well, Mark Wilson isn't a surprise. Um, you know, Kyle Stanley winning, maybe that was some surprise. But, I mean, he's such, he's such a good player. I just think that um, – you know, no one has really broken out. I mean, I guess you could say to some extent maybe Hunter has, but, you know, not really. Um, the Bubba Watson thing is probably the biggest surprise to anybody. I mean, I think a lot of people thought about him at the Masters, you know, going in, but I, I certainly wasn't one of them. But uh, there are a lot enough people, if you talk to enough people, I think there were a lot of people that were thinking about him. So, I mean, to, some, to a large extent, maybe he wasn't a surprise. He's won on the PGA Tour, I think it was two or three times. So, I mean, so that's not even a surprise, really. So I don't think there's anything that's gone, you know, outside of form right now. I mean, last year, you had Mark Wilson win twice in, in a very short period of time early in the season. And I think that was a – that might have been a little out of form. But generally, I don't think there's anything out of form. I think you're looking to see some of the other guys trying to step up. I'm looking for Jim Sturrock to maybe step up and have a, have a little better season than he had last year. And I think he's doing that, but I think it really requires him to win. And – uh I think the Ernie Els thing is pretty interesting, too, because I think he's really showing that his game is back. I mean, he's already back now to 40th in the world, and he's been so close to winning golf tournaments this year that I would, would suspect that he will win a golf tournament at some point in 2012. Well, Brad Buffoni, of course, the agent for Mark Wilson, and Zach Johnson, he and I converse quite often. And, uh, you know, Wilson, of course, I know this doesn't make you happy, but being a Packer fan, uh, Wilson's a huge Packer fan. And, uh, you know, looking back at uh, what Wilson did this year already, and then, uh, of course, uh, Zach's having a nice year. Uh, why don't you assess Zach's game for uh, the state of Iowa? Well, I mean, I think Zach has turned it around. I mean, I don't know exactly what happened last year. I don't think it was a focus issue. I just think he just didn't, he just didn't have something. It wasn't clicking for him last year. And, you know, he sits down at the end of the season with all of his people, his agent, his caddy, um, his strength guys, his swing guys, they all sit down and they talk about it and they work through it and they kind of take a look at a plan for, for the following year. And if there was the plan was it was a little faulty the year before or whatever it was, he just didn't have it. He just didn't have a Zach Johnson year. And, you know, I say that, and, and I'm going to say this with all sincerity, 
Zach Johnson is maybe the largest under over a tier rather on the PJ tour that I can think of in years. I mean, here's a guy rolling out of Drake university that nobody really knew except for the people that, you know, obviously were at Drake or in Cedar Rapids. And here he comes and he wins golf tournaments. He wins major championships. He's got, he's got game. He can play uh, the hard golf courses as well as the easy golf courses. So, you know, here's a guy that's a huge overachiever. So, when, now all of a sudden we're looking at he doesn't have a very good year in 2012 or 2011, and if you would have looked at that year when he first came out, you would have said, well, it's not a bad year for Zach Johnson. Then you look at the year now from everything that he's done, and you're like, holy cow. I mean, that's not a very good year for Zach Johnson. That's just how different things are from when he first came out to where he is now, and so you expect him to win. You expect him to be able to turn it on and have a have game, and I think, you know, most likely in Zach's case, what really what defines him when he's out here on the PGA Tour is going to be short game. It's going to be from 100 yards and in. If his 100 yards and in is not working, uh, he is not going to win golf tournaments. And I think that was where he was lacking last year. You know, Alex, I, you mentioned Bubba Watson kind of being a surprise win to Masters. Obviously, not many people were thinking about it. But um, I, I coached college golf for 11 years, and I watched all these guys coming up. And sometimes the players on the range, they look like robots when they're out there in their swings. Here you got a guy that just kind of invents his own golf game. I, I'd like to know your opinion. I mean, personally, I think it might be pretty good for the game seeing somebody curve it and do different things like that. I mean, do you think he's got that uh, you know, ability to kind of change uh, change an outlook of the game and maybe have this John Daly ripple effect throughout the game? Well, I think it's good to have the mindset that Bubba Watson has, the fact that there's it seems like a no-fear factor. You know, I can do this shot, I can do that shot. But, you know, this game now, with the equipment the way it is, is really not built for a Bubba Watson game. I mean, he's almost a freak of nature in regards to what you can do with this equipment because how many guys can take a, a golf ball with this equipment now and, you know, and take it off the toe and turn it over, you know, 25 yards uh, up a hill into a, uh, into a pin? There's just, it's just, I think that's, that's more a recipe for disaster with this equipment than anything else. If you took me back 25 years, and I was playing with, a, you know, a professional ball or a lot of ball, and I was playing with the old equipment, and I would say, you know, that's, that's what golf is all about. That is not what golf is today. Golf is so much different than that. But yet at the same time, you've got to admire his, um, his ability to do that and his, uh, his creativity, which is what we've lost with the new equipment, and maybe at some time that will come back. I think that is what – it's almost like where, we, where tennis was with the metal rackets and the, and the wood rackets. The things you could do with wood, you could never do with metal. We're talking to Alex Maselli, and he's kind enough to join us. Where are you at right now, by the way? Well, I'm outside of a restaurant. I'm supposed to have dinner with uh, Butch Harmon in a few minutes. And so I'm, doing, I'm talking with you guys, and then I'm off, off to dinner with Butch. Well, Butch has been on this show a couple of times, by the way. And uh, tell him we said hi from on the tee. We certainly appreciate taking time. Make sure Butch buys for you, by the way. I will make sure. Because he loves the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right. You guys uh, take care. All right. Alex Maselli, thank you very much for taking time to join us. We're going to take a break. Come back here on the T on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio and Television Network. 